I weep for Adonais, he is dead. O oh, weep for Adonais, though our tears thaw not the frost which binds so dear a head. And thou, sad hour, selected from all years to mourn our loss, rouse thy obscure compeers and teach them thine own sorrow. Say, with me died Adonais, till the future dares forget the past, his fate and fame shall be an echo and a light unto eternity. Where wert thou, mighty mother, when he lay, when thy son lay pierced by the shaft which flies in darkness? Where was Lorn Urania when Adonais died? With veiled eyes, mid listening echoes in her paradise, she sat while one with soft enamoured breath rekindled all the fading melodies, with which, like flowers that mock the course beneath, he had adorned and hid the coming bulk of death. O oh, weep for Adonais, he is dead. Wake, melancholy mother, wake and weep. Yet wherefore? Quench within their burning bed thy fiery tears, and let thy loud heart keep like his a mute and uncomplaining sleep. For he is gone, where all things wise and fair descend. Oh, dream not that the amorous deep will yet restore him to the vital air. Death feeds on his mute voice and laughs at our despair. Most musical of mourners, weep again. Lament anew, Urania. He died, who was the sire of an immortal strain, blind, old, and lonely when his country's pride, the priest, the slave, and the liberticide, trampled and mocked with many a loathed rite of lust and blood, he went unterrified into the gulf of death. But his clear sprite yet reigns o'er earth, the third among the sons of light. Most musical of mourners weep anew. Not all to that bright station dared to climb, and happier they their happiness who knew, whose tapers yet burn through that night of time in which suns perished. Others more sublime, struck by the envious wrath of man or God, have sunk extinct in their refulgent prime. And some yet live, treading the thorny road which leads through toil and hate to fame's serene abode. But now thy youngest, dearest one has perished, the nursling of thy widowhood, who grew like a pale flower by some sad maiden cherished, and fed with true love tears instead of dew. Most musical of mourners weep anew. Thy extreme hope, the loveliest and the last, the bloom whose petals nipped before they blew, died on the promise of the fruit, is waste. The broken lily lies, the storm is overpast. To that high capital where kingly death keeps his pale court in beauty and decay, he came, and bought with price of purest breath a grave among the eternal. Come away, haste while the vault of blue Italian day is yet his fitting charnel roof, while still he lies as if in dewy sleep he lay. Awake him not. Surely he takes his fill of deep and liquid rest, forgetful of all ill. He will awake no more, oh, never more. Within the twilight chamber spreads apace the shadow of white death, and at the door invisible corruption waits to trace his extreme way to her dim dwelling place. The eternal hunger sits, but pity and awe soothe her pale rage, nor dares she to deface so fair a prey, till darkness and the law of change shall o'er his sleep the mortal curtain draw. O oh, weep for Adonais, the quick dreams, the passion-winged ministers of thought, who were his flocks, 
whom near the living streams of his young spirit he fed, and whom he taught the love which was its music, wander not, wander no more from kindling brain to brain, but droop there whence they sprung, and mourn their lot round the cold heart, where after their sweet pain they ne'er will gather strength or find a home again. And one with trembling hands clasps his cold head and fans him with her moonlight wings and cries, Our love, our hope, our sorrow is not dead. See on the silken fringe of his faint eyes like dew upon a sleeping flower there lies a tear some dream has loosened from his brain. Lost angel of a ruined paradise, she knew not t'was her own, as with no stain she faded, like a cloud which had outwept its rain. One from a lucid urn of starry dew washed his light limbs as if embalming them. Another clipped her profuse locks and threw the wreath upon him like an anadem, which frozen tears instead of pearls begem. Another in her willful grief would break her bow and winged reeds, as if to stem a greater loss with one which was more weak, and dull the barbed fire against his frozen cheek. Another splendour on his mouth alit, that mouth whence it was wont to draw the breath which gave it strength to pierce the guarded wit, and pass into the panting heart beneath with lightning and with music. The damp death quenched its caress upon his icy lips, and as a dying meteor stains a wreath of moonlight vapour which the cold night clips, it flushed through his pale limbs and passed to its eclipse. And others came, desires and adorations, winged persuasions and veiled destinies, Splendours and glooms and glimmering incarnations of hopes and fears and twilight fantasies, and sorrow with her family of sighs, and pleasure blind with tears, led by the gleam of her own dying smile instead of eyes, came in slow pomp. The moving pomp might seem like pageantry of mist on an autumnal stream. All he had loved and moulded into thought from shape and hue and odour and sweet sound, lamented Adonais. Morning sought her eastern water-tower, and her hair unbound, wet with the tears which should adorn the ground, dimmed the aerial eyes that kindled day. Afar the melancholy thunder moaned, pale ocean in unquiet slumber lay, and the wild winds flew round, sobbing in their dismay. Nor let us weep that our delight is fled far from these carrion kites that scream below. He wakes or sleeps with the enduring dead. Thou canst not soar where he is sitting now, dust to the dust. But the pure spirit shall flow back to the burning fountain whence it came, a portion of the eternal, which must glow through time and change, unquenchably the same, whilst thy cold embers choke the sordid hearth of shame. Peace, peace, he is not dead, he doth not sleep. He hath awakened from the dream of life. Tis we who list in stormy visions keep with phantoms an unprofitable strife, and in mad trance strike with our spirit's knife invulnerable nothings. We decay like corpses in a charnel. Fear and grief convulse us and consume us day by day, and cold hopes swarm like worms within our living clay. He has outsoared the shadow of our night. Envy and calumny and hate and pain, and that unrest which men miscall delight can touch him not, and torture not again. From the contagion of the world's slow stain he is secure, and now can never mourn a heart grown cold, a head grown grey in vain. Nor when the spirit self has ceased to burn, with sparkless ashes load an unlamented urn. He lives, 
He wakes, tis death is dead, not he. Mourn not for Adonais. Thou young dawn, turn all thy dew to splendour, for from thee the spirit thou lamentest is not gone. Ye caverns and ye forests, cease to moan, cease ye faint flowers and fountains, and thou air, which like a mourning veil thy scarf hath thrown o'er the abandoned earth, now leave it bare, even to the joyous stars which smile on its despair. He is made one with nature. There is heard his voice in all her music, from the moan of thunder to the song of night's sweet bird. He is a presence to be felt and known in darkness and in light, from herb and stone, spreading itself where'er that power may move which has withdrawn his being to its own, which wields the world with never-wearied love, sustains it from beneath, and kindles it above. Go thou to Rome, which is the sepulchre, oh, not of him, but of our joy. Tis naught that ages, empires, and religions there lie buried in the ravage they have wrought, for such as he can lend. They borrow not glory from those who made the world their prey. And he is gathered to the kings of thought who waged contention with their time's decay, and of the past are all that cannot pass away. Go thou to Rome. At once the paradise, the grave, the city, and the wilderness, and where its wrecks like shattered mountains rise, and flowering weeds and fragrant copses dress the bones of desolation's nakedness, pass till the spirit of the spot shall lead thy footsteps to a slope of green access, where, like an infant's smile, over the dead a light of laughing flowers along the grass is spread. And grey walls mould around, on which dull time feeds like slow fire upon a hoary brand, and one keen pyramid with wedge sublime, pavilioning the dust of him who planned this refuge for his memory, doth stand like flame transformed to marble, and beneath a field is spread, on which a newer band have pitched in heaven's smile their camp of death, welcoming him we lose with scarce extinguished breath. Here pause. These graves are all too young as yet to have outgrown the sorrow which consigned its charge to each, and if the seal is set, here on one fountain of a mourning mind, break it not thou. Too surely shalt thou find thine own well full, if thou returnest home, of tears and gall. From the world's bitter wind seek shelter in the shadow of the tomb. What Adonais is, why fear we to become? The one remains, the many change and pass. Heaven's light forever shines, earth's shadows fly. Life, like a dome of many-coloured glass, stains the white radiance of eternity until death tramples it to fragments. Die, if thou wouldst be with that which thou dost seek. Follow where all is fled. Rome's as your sky, flowers, ruins, statues, music, words, are weak the glory they transfuse with fitting truth to speak. Why linger? Why turn back? Why shrink, my heart? Thy hopes are gone before. From all things here they have departed. Thou shouldst now depart. A light is passed from the revolving year, and man, and woman. And what still is dear attracts to crush, repels to make thee wither. The soft sky smiles, the low wind whispers near. Tis Adonais calls. O oh, hasten thither, no more let life divide what death can join together. That light whose smile kindles the universe, that beauty in which all things work and move, 
that benediction which the eclipsing curse of birth can quench not, that sustaining love which through the web of being, blindly wove by man and beast and earth and air and sea, burns bright or dim, as each are mirrors of the fire for which all thirst, now beams on me, consuming the last clouds of cold mortality. The breath whose might I have invoked in song descends on me. My spirit's bark is driven far from the shore, far from the trembling throng whose sails were never to the tempest given. The massy earth and spherid skies are riven. I am borne darkly, fearfully afar, whilst burning through the inmost veil of heaven, the soul of Adonais, like a star, beacons from the abode where the Eternal are.